Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology and in this particular video lecture we are going to talk about blue-white screening. I have been receiving this question from my students regarding this blue-white screening. What is blue-white screening? Why do you need blue-white screening? We will be discussing everything in this video and I am going to explain it as simple as I can. So what is this blue-white screening is all about? You can see screening. So let me take a color first here. Okay, Let me take a color red. So this term, focus on this term, screening. Screening for what? Basically, we are talking about screening of gene libraries. Okay, we are screening specific DNA or target DNA from library of genes. Okay, library of genes from genomic DNA library. We want to screen. So what is genomic DNA library? We know that a whole organism, we have an organism on every single gene of that organism single every single gene is cloned and stored in a inside a host cell let's say that's bacteria let's say that's e coli and in petri plates we have those separate genes placed in a petri plate like that now when we do this cloning we call it as a molecular cloning process where the target dna of our interest can be cloned inside a vector vector are gene delivery vehicles will deliver that target dna inside a host cell that is e coli cell and then we culture that E. coli cell in petri plate. And when we need to work with any specific gene, we can go back to that particular petri plate where we are supposed to find it and we screen it, we find it. Now that is a big question, you know, when we are trying to find out, you know, when we conduct the process of molecular cloning. In molecular cloning what happens, let me tell you the simple idea of molecular cloning here, is that what we have, we have a vector, we have a target DNA, okay. We have vector, we have a target DNA and we have a host. Let's say in this case host is E. coli, fine, no issue, okay, no issue. The vector, let's say it is plasmid, let's assume it's plasmid vector. The target DNA X, Y, Z, whatever gene we are targeting, that is it. So what we simply do here, I'll change the color here. Let's say this is the plasmid and let's change the color to green, that's the target DNA. So what happened is that we cut the plasmid DNA or the vector in a specific point which is known as multiple cloning site where we insert, where we target to insert the target DNA. So we will cut it at some place. So what I will show you is that it is cut and we will try to join this here. Okay. So this is how it looks like, right? This is a part of molecular cloning. And what we call this whole process, if I tell you, this is normal plasmid, this is recombinant plasmid. Because why call it recombinant? Because this plasmid is a combination of the vector DNA as well as the target DNA, right? This is recombinant plasmid. Then this recombinant plasmid need to be inserted inside the host cell, let's say that is the E. coli the host cell E. coli and inside of the host cell we have this target DNA inserted like this. It is complete and then we allow this host cell to grow in a petri plate, okay, in a culture media. This is the whole process of molecular cloning in simple manner. Now what I want to say, the most important thing is that what is this blue-white screening? Remember, we are sticking to this idea, what is this term blue and white signifies? I am coming to that point now. Now once you know this overview of molecular cloning, now you need to know one more thing is that during the process of recombination or molecular cloning process, when we allow the plasmid to be fused with the target DNA, there are three different possibilities. Possibilities, three separate possibilities. What are those possibilities? Let me erase this and then I will talk about that possibility here. Okay. Okay, just a second. What I will do is I will take the eraser or simply I will take erase all this ink. Okay, fine. All right. So there are three possibilities. Let me write them. What are the possibility? Possibility number one, try to understand this feature. 
possibility number one is when we have our plasmid let us draw all these things again we have our plasmid we have our target DNA all this case we have the same idea okay target DNA and plasmid let us draw that for all three here okay possibility number one two and three possibility one two and this is three three possibilities so possibility number one is that when we cut this target DNA at some point uh, uh, we cut the vector at some point and the target DNA should be inserted there in that target area then what happened we cut it fine it gets cleaved but this target DNA failed to attach in that specific area it's a possibility right so we cut it with restriction endonucleus fine it gets cut but then it gets self ligated self ligated so at the end what we will get is this and this so the target DNA remain as it is and the plasmid itself ligated so no recombination is done no recombinant DNA is formed so if I write it here recombinant DNA whether it is formed or not no recombinant DNA formation now step number two another idea what happens here let us say we use the same restriction as it cuts the target DNA gets inserted in that proper area. So, what we will see is something like this and the target DNA gets inserted in that proper area. So, if our query is whether we got the recombinant DNA, yes we got it right. Recombinant plasmid, we form a recombinant plasmid recombinant plasmid and the target DNA is inserted in the correct location in the correct location very important. Now the third scenario we use the restriction endonucleus we cut the plasmid we add the target DNA but here the target DNA failed to insert itself in the target location instead let us say we use a restriction endonucleus instead of cutting it here it cuts someplace else let us say here or here someplace else so what happened is that afterwards obviously the target DNA will be inserted but in this case the target DNA is inserted in totally different location so this is not the correct way this is also recombinant plasmid okay this is also recombinant plasmid but the entry is not this is not the desired entry. So, this is entry in a wrong location. So, whether we will get a recombinant DNA here, we got a recombinant plasmid, but not the right one. So, it is a wrong one. Now, in this case, everything is very simple, right? When I explain this, it is very simple. We can easily see that there are three possibilities. Now, in the inside the host or E. coli all these plasmids will be transferred because we do not know what is going on inside because nobody can see it right we cannot see plasmid with our naked eye like that. So once the process is done whatever process it is whether it is a right recombination wrong recombination or no recombination at all the plasmid gets inserted inside the host cell that is E. coli and then once it is inserted inside the E. coli the E. coli start growing in the petri plate filled with medium then how to know among these three types of bacterial colony the colony that actually consists of the correctly added recombinant DNA or recombinant plasmid try to understand it. So there are three types of colonies when you try to work it further we need that particular colony where we can find the right recombinant plasmid otherwise the whole process is of no use. So, how to screen the right recombinant plasmid that is the biggest challenge and to get rid of that challenge to, to win that challenge we use blue white screening. So, this is a screening technique that will help us to find out that correctly recombinant plasmid from the rest of the other varieties in the host cell how to do that how it helps to do that let us see that here. This is the petri plate of blue white screening how it looks like you can see the white colonies and there are blue colonies which is not visible here like black 
but these are all blue colonies the black color dot like structure these are blue these are white okay now why it uh, is called as blue white screening let me discuss about that see in blue white screening in blue white screening there are few things that you need to understand what you need to understand is that the plasmid that we use that's why for the molecular cloning the plasmid that we use that plasmid has this restriction endonuclease site or re site and this restriction endonuclease site is actually placed inside a very specific gene that is known as beta galactosidase encoding gene beta galactosidase encoding gene also known as lac z if you recall the lac operon if you know lac operon you know in lac operon there are structural genes lac z lac y lac a so here it is lac z that encodes for beta galactosidase enzyme okay which helps in the utilization of lactose so this lac z gene is placed and the restriction endonuclease site is placed within the lac z gene now what do we mean that try to understand this is lac z gene restriction endonuclease sites are also embedded there so if our target restriction endonuclease enzyme cleaves that that means it's cleaving the lac z gene so if we cleave the lac z gene and then we insert the target dna so if the target dna gets inserted in the correct location which is disturbing the lac z gene or disrupting the lac z gene the only way the target dna can get inserted here in this plasmid in the correct location is to disrupt the lac z gene it has to disrupt the lac z gene if the target dna gets inserted here or here it will not disrupt the lac z gene but if it inserts here it will disturb the lac z gene so the product of lac z that is beta galactosidase will not be produced if the target dna is properly incorporated got it so now i'll go back here three situations again i'll be discussing these three situations now for you so <clears throat> let's say this is a place where we have this lac z gene let's change the color something that you can visualize let's say this one lac z lac z lac z okay this is all let's say lac z okay now what will happen try to understand in the first situation the target dna never inserts so lac z remains intact so let me write lac z intact in this situation the target dna inserts properly in the correct location so it will disrupt the lac z gene so we can write lac z disrupted and this third situation again the target dna inserts some place else so the lac z remains as it is so lac z remains intact so among these three situations only one occasion lac z remains disrupted and that is when correct recombination is done so that is this is our desired product remember this is our desired product so in our desired in our desired product in our desired colony the lac z expression will be prevented okay so let me write it here now so the lac z expression will be so no expression in correctly sorry recombined plasmid okay or correctly recombined plasmid containing bacteria or host here okay try to understand and now in this particular screening how this blue white co color comes let me tell you that as well for the process of lac z expression we know lac operon is inducible operon it needs to have a inducer in order to have a proper expression so in this case also we need to add an inducer and that is iptg this is an inducer inducer of lac operon which we pro provide from outside very very important and one more component that we add here is x gal x gal what is x gal x gal is non metabolizable 
form of I mean allolactose not galactose allolactose uh, analog. So, in case of the process of lac operon we know lactose plays a crucial role allolactose plays a crucial role. So, here if we give them allolactose then the cell can utilize allolactose. But X gal is non utilizable form of allolactose analog. Non utilizable form of allolactose analog for the bacteria. And X gal is actually colorless in nature. Now, what happens is that try to understand the situation now. So, we have X gal which is white or colorless in nature and the moment beta galactosidase acts beta galactosides convert the white colored galactose x gal into a colored which color blue colored product should have uh, drawn this with blue color converts it into a blue colored product. Try to understand. White galactose is already, X gal is already there in the petri plate in the medium and now if we and if the beta galactosidase is produced then it will convert the white color into blue colored colony. So, we will get blue colony in a petri plate we get blue colonies when when the beta galactosidase is properly working and properly producing. And when the beta galactosidase will properly produce? If the lac Z gene here, remember lac Z gene is undisturbed. Try to connect it now. If the lac Z is undisturbed, then the beta galactosidase will be properly produced. And then it will convert the white colored X gal into blue colored product. Then you will see the blue colony. That means if we see the blue colony, that is those colonies, they are filled with the recombinant plus, they are filled with non recombinant plasmid either or they are filled with plasmid without proper recombinant. So, blue colony means these two types. So, it will have blue colony, this will have blue colony, both one without any self ligated plasmid without any recombination, another one with a wrongly wrong recombination, wrong place or added target fragment in a wrong location, both the case. Now, in situation where the target DNA of ours is properly inserted that will disrupt the lag Z sorry that will disrupt the lag Z as it disrupts the lag Z the beta galactosidase will not be produced as a result X gal will not be converted to blue colored product. So, it will remain white in color. So, what else we have here we will have this white colony. I so, I am drawing it with red color here, these are white colony. So, these are all white colonies. Okay. So, white colony means what? The colony of bacteria that are carrying the recombinant plasmid where the target DNA is inserted in the proper location. So, from this particular petri plate, we have two types of colony blue and white. We can select the white colony if you want to deal with any particular target recombinant plasmid then we will select the white colony and all the blue colonies are of no use for us because the target DNA is not inserted in any of those host cell. Got it? So, that is what the blue white screening is all about that is why we use blue white screening for screen out the target recombinant plasmid inside the host cell. I believe we have a clear idea about blue white screening. If you like this video please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.